Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. The talk of FC24 right now isn't the TOTS content that is dropping on this game. It's the frustration that has hit a breaking point with EA, their mistakes, and just how bad of a game this game really is. If you're hearing this for the first time or you're deeply involved in the whole conversation, I'm gonna break it down today with some breaking news about maybe even an EA employee speaking out about this and my personal opinion and response to everything that has been going on on Twitter inside of the community with videos and everything. I have some thoughts to spread here, guys, as well, and a way that I think we can maybe spark some change in this community as well. So if you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. Buckle in because there is a lot to discuss. Let's start from the top. Why is this situation with frustration and all of the problem with this game? Where did it even start? Well, it started on Friday of League One Tots in this game. These cards were, of course, in the red pick rewards. You're playing foot champs. You have an opportunity to pack these cards. And a lot of people, all of a sudden, after finishing their games early on Friday nights, were noticing that the red player picks were juiced. Guys, the pack luck was so insane. It's basically bugged, right? We never see red player picks this good, where you have the chance of packing a 15 million coin Mbappe, and at the time, a 10 million coin Usman Dembele in player picks like commonly guys the best players in this league one tot squad were packable from the rewards and it wasn't just like one player got them in rewards and everybody got excited it was like every other player pick that was open was either an Mbappe or a Dembele or a Zaire Emery or a Taram like the rewards were honestly juiced and it actually made it feel like you had a chance of packing something good from a mode that is super sweaty the weekend league foot champs, right? You guys know this is the most, almost the most sweatiest mode in the game. Rivals is challenging foot champs this year for the most sweaty mode. But it was like, hey, we never get guaranteed good rewards. This is your chance to get something done, right? Everybody was rushing to the game. It actually drew, drew a lot of hype to the game because people were trying to get their games in and get these rewards. Even though we knew those rewards were kind of too good, right? Because when are they ever that good? It gave us something fun to play for. People got excited. And then just a couple hours later, EA took it away, right? They said that those champs player picks were providing unintended results, basically telling us we didn't want you guys to get those good of rewards. That's what this tweet says, right? And this has been corrected in game. Now red picks look absolutely shocking, like the worst of any league of team in the season that we have had. And guys, this right here, all the pent up frustration about this whole entire year of FC 24, the gameplay being shambolic, all the mistakes, that have been there, the transition even more so towards store packs and gambling on this game, the pent up frustration unleashed. It exploded, guys. It's been building up throughout the entire year, right? This is arguably one of the worst games of FIFA or EAFC 24 in its first release. The first FC 24 game is arguably one of the worst FIFAs uh, ever with all the problems that this game has had. There's a ton of responses under this uh, EA tweet. It's got 8 million views. It got community noted. Any good tweet by FC Direct has been community noted this year. It's been crazy, right? But it continues on from this because some very big name creators started talking and commenting about how they actually want to create change, right? Nick, RTFM, arguably the biggest English streamer of this game of Ultimate Team, um, or one of the biggest, and a well-respected man in the community, stuck his neck out there, boys. He is tweeting this to say, guys, let's boycott FC24, and that's where the whole boycott FC24 thing really originated, I think. Um, this tweet has good intentions, guys. If you read it, um, I think the heart behind this tweet is to promote change and to actually make something happen and do something to this game but what happened was a lot of people saw this and thought it was okay to start hating on everybody who plays this game basically if you didn't delete fc24 then you're the problem which really isn't true at all it just kind of sparks some controversy and really like kind of cancel culture ish it like really felt really extreme that everybody who was if you were seen playing this game it's like you're hated because you shouldn't be playing this game. Boycott EAFC. And there's a lot of negativity around that along with a lot of the frustration, right? It all stems from the frustration that we have on this game. But it went it went crazy. Like, it went really, really crazy. Not just because of this tweet. I'm not blaming him and saying that in any way, shape, or form. Like I said, he here is actually making a stand and saying, I'm willing to step up and make some change and try to create change 
by doing something that is risky and doing something that is kind of a big move, right? This also sparked a lot of controversy around, amongst content creators like myself. Basically, if you didn't quit, like Nick is saying, then you're an idiot or you're the problem or honestly, uh, like, you know, terrible things were being said about players who didn't uh, quit this game. Not that he was saying that, but that's how people were interpreting this tweet. Again, I don't think he meant to have any hate or to cause any animosity amongst creators or really step on anybody's toes too much in the community, guys. He was saying here, I'm down to, to make a stance inside of this frustration. I'm down to do something about it. Now, most people are not getting angry uh, and, uh, you know, spewing hate about content creators and especially ones that don't deserve it most people are not doing that but there are a lot that are taking it way too far and projecting their anger that is based around ea again you guys remember that this this anger and this kind of frustration is based around the makers of the game that we are playing and the way that it's going and all the things that we mentioned earlier let's remember that here right um but they're projecting that on creators instead of who the really real like issue is on right it's on ea so from a standpoint of life this is one thing i wanted to mention like that's not the right way to go about things if you find yourself like casting your anger onto someone else that do they don't deserve that right that's kind of like a life tip i guess i've you know i'm 28 years old so i'm not super old but i'm younger than others older than others like all i'm trying to say is just like life tip from what i've experienced in life like casting your anger uh because you're angry on somebody else doesn't really work like it just draws somebody else into the situation that doesn't really deserve to be there so that's kind of my two cents that i wanted to put in about that but to follow up on that i think nick realized the kind of stirred that his uh, tweet created and he kind of apologized for that because that was not his original intention right this is his follow-up tweet he's saying guys i stuck my neck out here i made a bold move and that caused so much hate that i did not intend that's kind of like the spark notes of this long tweet in my opinion he ends with saying he's disappointed that he didn't get the feedback he was hoping for from creators right from creators guys and as i'm in that kind of realm I want to address my stance on this, but I want to finish the conversation here first before we go ahead and do that. But that's kind of what he was trying to do again. Guys, I think he had good motives here. He wants to create change as all of us do. All of us that are frustrated about this game want to create change. We want to do something to actually get noticed so that we can get some of the changes that we want implemented on this game, right? Now, kind of continuing in the news yesterday this is like the breaking news type of stuff man yesterday later in the day he was streaming and he posted it on youtube i just noticed this i was not in the stream but i heard that there was some kind of conversations about this guys um he had an email from somebody who j said that they were an inside actual employee at ea a fellow as he put in quotes because as a lot of people have been using these sort of terms incompetent ea developer like he worked on the game and this email was from somebody who posed as an ea developer who basically confirms all the things that we think we know about ea as true like they're all about the money uh, they dismiss the community problems unless they're related to dollar signs some of the gameplay issues that we knew some things about the game as well that we've known about right like that um that during covid ea cut a bunch of jobs people left who actually built the game so the people that built the game aren't actually there with the knowledge to fix it anymore. And new people have come in to try to build on top of that. And it's just creating more of a mess. I used the analogy of Jenga a couple of days ago. Like if you were to take a piece out and try to put it on top, eventually the whole thing crumbles, right? And that's what feels like is happening on this game right now. So we don't hundred percent know if this is truthful or not, because the guy says, Hey, I have to remain anonymous um in this email nick said he was trying to search it didn't come up with anything he was like going on linkedin trying to find this guy patrick reed who when i see patrick reed all i think of is the golfer so that was kind of funny if that's his alias um but that's the email again is it fake is it real we probably will never know but this is the problem that we've known whether this confirms it or just you know everything right everything points to the problem being it's the money with EA, right? We've known this, right? It's because the game changes that they make are not that big and they don't actually impact the game that much, but the area in which we see them make the biggest changes that they continue to build on top of and get technically better at, right? If you think about it in this way, is the store. It's all about the money, guys. And I actually wanna show you some reports. We're an accountant, right? I was an accountant. This is The Foot Accountant's YouTube channel. 
I want to show you some actual reports. This is from EA Sports' website. This is direct from them, guys. Take a look at the last quarter financial highlights from EA. They are making absolute bank. This is from the last three months ended on March 31st, just about a month and a half ago. They had $333 million in game sales. All of their microtransaction sales, which is their live services and other line here, were 1.4, and this is in million, that's $1.4 billion. $1.4 billion. Like, look at how many uh, or how much of their income is all of the microtransactions and the live services. This is not just for FC. This would encompass some other games, but FC is by far EA's biggest game. And you're like, okay, Nate, that's the last three months. Not many people are buying this game right now, which you'd be correct. But take a look at for all EA games the last year in the same time frame, ending in the same month, it is $2 billion of game sales and $5.5 billion of live services, AKA microtransactions. This is what runs their game guys. And what have we seen even bigger and more crazy than ever this year is the store packs. We have 500K, 700K, 750K packs like every single week. And we've had packs like this since the middle to early stages of this game. It's all about the money guys. It's all about the money for them. And if there's going to be change that happens on this game, that is what we need to basically make an impact on for them to for us to want to change something on this game they're gonna have to see that we're making a stance to stay away from spending money on this game to really make a big difference in my opinion so that's where i want to get into where am i at on this right i know nick in this tweet was mentioning stopping playing the game and a lot of the hate in the community right now is that creators are maybe not deleting the game like if you're not deleting the game as a creator then you're the problem or you love ea and ea's got you in their back pocket that, that couldn't be further from the truth guys to be completely honest right i'm just telling you how it is for me i am not a place i am not in a place where i feel like i can delete the game and stop creating content on it and follow suit with what nick was hoping to um, obtain from his angle but i am taking initiative and risk and i'll mention that in a second because this is my job guys i depend on the income that it provides i'm very grateful for all of your support and watching these videos and honestly i really i really enjoy football and i really enjoy this game parts of it right with the sbcs sometimes and the exchanges this year the objectives evolutions have been an incredible addition to this game um, at the same time where we have so many problems i still enjoy like the connection to football i think that's what we all enjoy about this game the most right we love football and this is the best like third party thing out there apart from us going on the pitch and playing ourselves where we can have some sort of connection with the players that we see on the television playing football our favorite clubs our favorite uh, nations wherever you live and your favorite players individually this is the like top connection and with the coolest stuff inside of it to connect to those players right um, i think nick is right in saying that quitting the game accomplishes the goal though i do i 100 as i said earlier i agree with the statements that he's saying here i think it would accomplish the goal because if you're quitting the game you are also not going to be spending money on the game but quitting the game is also for me as a content creator like the biggest sacrifice i think we have to be the most adamant however about not spending money on this game because think about it if we look at those ea line revenues again right if we buy the game next year, is that going to put a big dent into EA's budget? Or if we don't buy the game, maybe a little bit if enough people do it, but it's probably going to be lesser of a dent in there as it would be if we made a dent in this big 5.5 billion whatever number by not buying FC points. And I know it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of talking about it and a lot of honestly being proactive to actually say things about it and to be outspoken about it for that to actually make a difference and a change. But I think that is the easiest way and the most likely way that we can actually incite change and i think uh personally that is something that i've always been about guys always if you think about it right um this channel five plus years ago i started this channel to help people play this game in a way that i found the most rewarding by not spending real money on these sorts of packs because that's the way that the game was pushing you right and we're still doing that to this day but i'm not changing anything to do with that i just want to be more outspoken 
and provide the best tips and info for all of you guys, if, especially if you're somebody who's spent loads and loads of money, which we have so many people in the live streams, guys that have been messaging me over the course of the years that we have been doing this to say, yo, I used to spend a ton of money in this game. I used to have a crazy gambling addiction to FC points and packs, but I've realized that there's a better way to do it. There's a, I realized there's a better way for me to spend my time on this game, spend a little bit of extra time learning how the supply and the demand of the market works and making trades and acquiring uh, coins in a way that does not require you to spend your actual real life money. It makes the game so much more rewarding when you play in that way and it doesn't hurt your pocketbook, right? That is not changing here, guys. I just want to be more outspoken and provide the best tips and info for you to possibly ch achieve that through the rest of this year and through FC 25 as well, I'm going to push myself to a higher standard. Sometimes we stop talking about trading in these videos, right? And we stop talking about how to make the best coins. We look at the market and we look at the cards, but there's not every day where I'm actually saying, if you want to make coins, this is what you need to do. I want to continue to do that and talk about that every single day, even on days where I'm not motivated to trade. Any one of you guys might be like, yo, I need to make some coins so that I can afford this or this or this. And if we teach you guys how to continue to use the market buying low selling high in so many different areas in so many different ways it is really easy to actually make a lot of coins i had over 11 million coins and i started opening store packs to get the best chance right of packing one of these crazy team of the season cards and uh i i was lucky enough to get one right it actually worked out i can't believe i'm actually saying that Mo it didn't until i got super lucky right uh, but that is why i've traded this year i traded really hard from like march until april mid-april went from five million coins up to like nine to ten mil because i wanted to have the chance of opening as many packs during team of the season as i could to try to pack these insane cards so none of that is changing for me guys right and i wanted to kind of put that out there because if you know some people are like nate you got to quit the game right that's how we're going to make a change well actually i think we can make the exact same change that we're wanting to make by quitting the game by not spending FC points. And uh, because again, if you're still playing the game, but you're not spending FC points, you're still affecting this number, which is affecting their minds and their business. And if you're not playing the game, you're obviously not affecting it as well, but you can still play the game and have fun. This year, like I said, has been one of the best years for other specific types of content like the exchanges and like evolutions that we've never seen before, right? It's like the best year of content for some things and the worst year for a lot of other things. And the bad is outweighing the good, but you can have a lot better time on this game if you're focused on the things that don't require spending money. So again, to end this part of the video, I mean, I'm reading your comments, guys. I've seen a lot of them. I know there's frustration and I share that frustration with you. But what I'm trying to provide today is a solution to the problem, just like Nick was in his tweets. And I'm also trying to promote it and I'm gonna be more outspoken about it and I'm gonna be making some more changes around here. So I hope you respect that. I hope you respect the decision. And I would love to hear your comments down below. Um, this tweet that I posted yesterday was kind of just like a fun, it kind of was just like a fun moment in the stream on Saturday where somebody joined the share play and was like, yo, I got a pack. I'm going to open with FC points. And we were like, nah, 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 we're not doing that anymore. Like we would let that fly before because it's kind of fun to see those packs, right? But not nah, store packs only with coins um, and not with FC points because we uh, just, again, we're going to start doing that now and continue that through the rest of this year and into FC25 and see what kind of difference it can make. But that doesn't just stop there, guys. It doesn't just stop there. It also has to continue with us having actual real feedback, right? Providing it to the creators that have the connections with EA in the partner program, like myself, um, to be able to give them that direct feedback and even just tweeting at them, right? There's the feedback portal that you can put information in. You have ideas and you have problems with the game. They read those, it seems, right? There were people that were getting unbanned from the streams for coin transferring when they were not actually doing that right there were people that were getting unbanned so to me it seems like they do halfway read those um so there's ways you can provide feedback but we have to be ready with that news and info and stuff that we want to change in this game when we get their attention that's another key part of this that i think nobody is mentioning it can't just be we have to not spend more money in this game and really promote that we have to be ready to explain the changes that we want to them so that they are ready to implement them and we can get what we're after here guys it's kind of like a two-way street two two things we have to do get their attention and then also deliver and ask for the things that we want the right things so that's kind of the whole conversation that i want to have today um i know it's going to be a longer video but 
I do really appreciate you guys' support. And I know there's a lot of people that are still very frustrated. And I want to just end by saying this last thing. There's a lot of cap on Twitter X. Like content creators have been told by EA to not post negatively about FC24. Like, bro, that is so cap. Look at me posting here about a guy using FC points and saying, no, 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 we're not, we're not doing this. We're not promoting this. Like, this is really cap, guys. I'm just being completely honest. So do not believe everything that you see um, on, on Twitter about all of this whole situation that is going down. There is a lot of frustration and emotions that are boiling over. So let's transition and actually talking about this game a little bit because yesterday, what a way to continue the Todd's content with another EA mistake, guys. Yesterday, literally like an hour after the video went live, which is going live usually at what, like 5 a.m. UK time, EA dropped... Uh, at 6 a.m. UK, UK time, 12 hours early, an icon player pick, but they quickly took it down because it was giving out the wrong players, right? This icon player pick's no longer in the game. It's only here on Footbin um, showing what it was, right? It was a one of three 88 plus that gave birthday, future star, team of the year, or winter wild card icon players, and it was giving out base icons. This is their tweet from yesterday saying that the 88 plus encore pick has been removed as it was incorrectly providing base icons. Players who partially completed the SBC will be able to continue from where they left off, and then who players who fully completed it um, uh, and received the base icon will be messaged in-game in the coming days, aka weeks, because we know compensation takes a long time now is this SBC even good whenever it comes back into the game I don't even know I'm still I'm still standing by this what I said a couple days ago I don't think icon player picks are really worth doing anymore in this game because a lot of those players that come out of this are not good the weight's terrible on these two and they're behind the curve unless you're packing a top five icon it is just not that great at least it does include foot birthdays but they went down on the rating the last icon pick was 90 plus this one is 88 plus so for me that one's an l i'm not going to be completing that even if it were to come back now we did have another icon player sbc yesterday with a billy and it actually gives you the option of picking i think the five star weak foot or the five star skill move a billy which is a dub this is cool um i don't think you can do it twice i think you can only do it one time so you got one choice to pick you want the skill moves you want the weak foot um and i think this sbc is deep but I think we really would have wanted Vieira, right? We were still looking at that Vieira leak that was, you know, has not dropped in this game yet. But for a French center mid, Vieira was kind of the guy. This card is good. She is very good. But for 938,000 coins, I just don't think it is it right now on this game. We also did have the premium league upgrades. Now, this is the SBC that I'm actually a little excited for. Ooh, I got to do my uh, daily log and I cannot forget that. Uh, anyways, the premium league one upgrade and D1 Arkema upgrade. I actually am excited to try these out because this will be probably our best chance of packing team of the season cards on a day in day out crafting and grind basis. I don't know how the weight's going to be on these, but again, there are very few golds in the league one and D1 Arkema. So if you're going to, if there's a week to try out premium upgrades, this is the week. It's the exact same pack that we had during team of the year with the 11 league one golds uh, and four of them being rare. Decent shot at tots here. We're going to uh, grind those out today on stream. So if you want to come by there, that link is down below in the description. Now we had an Evo yesterday as well. And you know what? I haven't even checked. I I've barely just looked at this Evo. I know it's called tots midfielder plus. It gives Tiki Taka first touch and technical plus play styles plus 10 pace, eight Oh, wow. Okay. So it's 100K, but it gives decent playstyle pluses. You get long ball pass, you get pinged pass, you get a weak foot upgrade. Um, and you get, okay. So, you know, this is not bad. Oh, I have a card that fits. This is the first time I've seen my club. Mukhtar goes 91 rated. Oh, he doesn't only has three star skills, though. Frick. He's got Tiki Taka. Okay, of course, those playstyle pluses 94 pace, 93 passing, 97 dribbling whoa okay so like that's a cool card that this evo can create i'm a fan of that it's max overall 85 max pace 85 shooting 81 defending 76 interesting what about this adley card how does he look in this uh 90 rated wow okay that looks pretty nice i don't know this evo looks decent but it is a hundred thousand coins but it gives technical plus technical plus um and what was the other one tiki taka plus those are very good play style pluses so i don't know i feel like this evo is is decent i don't think it's bad i've seen a couple of crazy cards now that i just opened foot.gg and opened some of these this evander card looks nuts um there's probably going to be some nice evos through this so if you want to spend 100k also you get the tots plus chemistry so you get 
automatically three star, two stars automatically, and then really easy to get that third star of chemistry if you put this card in your team. So that's decent. I wish it wasn't 100K, but I think it's a decent enough upgrade and creating a pretty meta card that probably worth 100,000 coins. Like that fic here, that... That fit here turns into a card who would be worth 100k on the market or more. So that's a decent Evo. And then, of course, we did have Tots Mixed League number three, including Lionel Messi. But guess what? Just like Ronaldo, he's extinct. Wait, Busquets got a card too and he's extinct and he has 99 passing? What? What is this card extinct at? Busquets is extinct at 290k. Why do EA mess with these price ranges, man? I don't get it. 13 mil for Messi? Sure, fine. Um, he'll be on the market hopefully in a couple of days. Ronaldo's on the market, I believe, or was. Wait, he's four-star, five-star? He's got a four-star skills, five-star weak foot. Oh, no. They're really saving that 5-5 five, five Messi for, like, Copa America or, like, footies or something. Okay, dang, man. That's crazy. I bet this Messi went back up. I bet this Messi went back up a little bit as well in price because people seeing... Yeah, 3.3 mil, and now he's back to 3.6. Is that what that said? Yeah, that makes sense to me because this card is extinct, and it doesn't even have five-star skills. Crazy, bro. Dang. I don't know. There's some other decent cards in this, like Podolski. Podolski looks cracked. The Jamie Vardy looks pretty good. I wish I could load Podolski's card. I'm trying to load it right now, and it's not loading. All right, there we go. Thank you, Footbin. He's 5'5 five, five with finesse, power shot, and aerial. This will be a card that I definitely got to try to, to uh, buy out, to buy and try out in the game. He looks cracked. Alderweire World looks decent. Aldasari looks decent as well. Uh, yeah, this is a decent Tots mixed league number three. Not crazy, but it is, uh, it is decent. Now, let's look at the market for a little bit and look into today's content on Monday. I think the League 1 Tots cards, guys, I sold the Taroms. Like yesterday, I bought Taram for... Um, Four of them for 800 to 805k, and I sold him at like 870 to 897. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna take the quick flips here. I think he ended up going over 900 for a quick minute, uh, and now he's back to like 840 or 850. So I'm glad I just took the cash and taking those quick flips there. These League One Tots cards, they're just they keep dropping, bro. I think with the whole animosity and the frustration of this game, nobody is buying cards to try. These cards just keep dying. Like Jonathan David's now 800k. Cherokee's under 500k. A bomb yang's under 300,000 coins. Some of them are like holding price, and other ones are just tanking. Um, Karchawi's now 1 5. Oh my goodness. How is Majri still extinct? Even though, like, she might end up being 300,000 coins, 350, but like, she's extinct at 290. And I'm just getting worried the day, every single day that goes by, if she's actually going to maintain a price on the market. But it just seems like not too many people are interested in buying these cards. And Mondays are usually very bad days for the impacts cards for team of the season. So I would not be looking to buy any of these today, in my opinion. I think we wait until tomorrow on Tuesday. Tuesday has been a good day to invest in some of these. But if you're looking to invest, we do have the weekly fodder investment, guys. It is time to talk about this because guess what? We have a guaranteed TOTS pack coming tomorrow on Tuesday. Get your clubs ready for that weekly TOTS upgrade. I know it's not that expensive of a TOTS pack, but it's a TOTS pack that's worth doing and everybody is going to want to do. And so what I would tell you to do is stock up on the 84s. Again, you guys know, you guys know every single week, these 84s, the last two weeks, they go down to 1.2, 1.3K, bang. They're back up to 2,000 coins by the time we get to Wednesday. Um, so what I would tell you to do is get a couple of 84s, at the very least stock your club. But if you're looking to make coins, I think 84s, their minimum price, 85s, which are at minimum price, are 86s? Oh my gosh, dude. Almost all fodder from 83s, 4s, 5s, 6s are minimum price. What about 87s? How much are the... These are almost minimum price too. Wow. I just think that 80, um, 84s all the way to 88 are probably going to go up just a little bit because we have those upgrade packs that are going to get refreshed and they've been moving every single week. Maybe 84s don't go above like 1.7 this week, uh, but the weekly TOTS upgrade is going to come back. We're going to get League One TOTS guaranteed. We might even have more upgrades like player picks today. I just think that those cards at minimum price, they might be worth the stock. You could at least lazy list them on the market and try to get some sales. Uh, that's crazy that all that fodder is minimum price, bro. Wow, that is absolutely nuts. Now, I mentioned player picks coming today, right? The 80 plus goes away. What are we going to get to replace that today on Monday? I bet you could guess in the comments because it's the same thing every other Monday. We go 80 plus, we go 81 plus. It's about time, EA. Um, it is about time. 
to release an 81 plus player pick, but one of four. We need the one of four option player picks. We need them now. Um, yeah, we need them. Okay. One of three, this garbage, we've had it for like five, not five months, like three months now. We've had this 80 plus one of three. It's time for a one of four. Do it today with the 81 plus pick that we would expect to be coming back out. And the 83 plus picks are going to be going away too. Maybe they already did. Those were absolutely atrocious. But today, hopefully with the 81 plus brings the 80 five plus player pick which during was it prem tots i forget what week that was out i think it was prem tots there was actually a really good chance of getting team of the season cards from the 85 plus pick and fingers crossed that might be coming out today on this game so watch out for that i think that could be another sbc that maybe makes 84s and 85s go up a little bit i think last time that was either two sbcs it was like an 80 no it was 184 rated squad that's all that it was so Another reason the 84s could maybe just bounce up a little bit in value. If you want to make that sort of investment, it's grindy, but it could work. Um, I don't know where Lacazette is. That's the only other player SBC that we have leaked right now. Again, we've looked at him the last two days. and We're like, guys, he's going to be coming out, but he has not been dropped yet. So the question is, will it be today or will they put somebody else out as an SBC? We do not know the answer to that question as of right now. We're still wondering where he is. Now, the last thing I want to talk about in this video is another way to make coins and again like i said we're going to try to be very on it especially even at this stage of the year i know some of you guys are playing this game maybe you just picked up the game because it's free right what a time just to think about this again what a time to log into this game and get this game for free on playstation plus when everything is going on in the menus right now <laughs> what a time ggz a Guys, out-of-packs uh, cards are so clear for trading right now. Their fluctuations are great. Yes, they move on the market. Sometimes they do drop. But, like, look at this Cordoba. You can see he's 370. But, look, like, four cards later, he's 420,000 coins. This guy is rare. And if you look at his graph, what does he do? He goes down to 370, and he goes up to 450. Wow. All right, Saturday, let's look at his graph. Or maybe Friday. Friday, he went down to 386, back up to 417. So you got like, you know, 20,000 coins of tax here. So if you can buy him at 370 and sell him for 420, that's a pretty good flip, right? You're making almost 30,000 coins after tax right there. Yeah, it's a 50K swing with 20K tax. That's the sort of thing I'd be trading with right now. Look at cards from the Golazo promos. Look at the foot birthdays. The best place to trade right now is on out of packs cards. I know it's really tempting to buy a team of the seasons, and maybe some of these tots cards are fluctuating in price a good amount. Um, I have not been watching them. I'm sure they're moving a good bit here or there. You can watch their graphs and trade with them too. But what I would tell you is the out of packs cards that nobody else is looking at that are big name players that people are still using in their teams, even if you think, nah, they're too cheap, bro. Like nobody's using a 100. 100k Royce when there's a new one out, right? Uh, nah, people are definitely going to be using this Royce. Um, you know, I bet he has good graph fluctuations too. He went down to 97k and back up to like almost 110. There's a 102 and there's a 110, right? That's a good flip from like 95k. Let's say you get a bit here up to 110. It's grindy, but it works, guys. So that is one thing I wanted to mention at the end of the video as well. Those out of packs cards are the best place to trade. And today on stream, we will be crafting because I have not opened any packs over the weekend. Basically, I haven't opened too much more than like, I don't know, six or seven packs and some player picks after we packed Mbappe. So we're going to play some champs today, um, and we are going to grind some packs to see if we get lucky to hit the Messi, hit any of those cards, and continue to crafting SBCs, right? The 8310 is out. It's a really good crafting grind around the menus, so we're going to be messing with that. If you want more conversation as well, by the way, and more videos, check out the TFA2 channel. I plugged it in yesterday's video. Some of you guys are asking me, why didn't you post this video on the main channel? Uh, honestly, it's just because we've got the daily uploads going here, and I don't like to break up that streak because business-wise, that is just 100% honestly, that is the best way to do it. So we upload extra videos on the second channel. That link is in the description or up above right here. But again, guys, I want to close out the video by saying thank you for all the support. I know a lot of you guys are frustrated, and maybe some of the things I said today in this video aren't what you wanted to hear. But hopefully uh, you can respect the decision that I'm making uh, and they could hear me out. And uh, yeah, I would love to continue this conversation. We're going to be talking about it today in the stream as well. So uh, come come through for some more conversation about this whole situation. Again, Twitch link is in the description, guys. Again, I appreciate the support. I love you, dudes. And I will see you in the stream today. It's been Nathan for the I'll see you guys there. Peace. Out.